You're listening to the Grow Landscapers podcast. The podcast where we delve deeper into landscape business, interviewing legends of the UK landscaping industry. So, join host Nick Ruddle as he explores their thoughts, insights and experiences. That's here on the Grow Landscapers podcast. Hello and welcome to the Grow Landscapers podcast. I'm Nick Ruddle and today we're joined by someone who's won loads of awards in the industry and who's also extremely well respected and literally just a few days ago won the Bali Special Award for Best Design and Build for West Hill. It's Mr James Scott from the Garden Company. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you Nick. How are you? I'm very well, very well. Um, I was there to witness your brilliant achievement, a lifetime achievement. Um, uh, at the uh, the Grover on Friday, and what a day it was, and what an achievement that that is. But it's not the only award you won, though, is it? You won loads. We've won a few. We've won we've won quite a few Bali awards over the year. We've won some SGD awards, and we've won uh, Pro Landscaper Business Awards as well. It's nice um, to get recognised on the business side as well as what you do as a you know as a company, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it it certainly is, and. Um, uh, most of the awards are based on the the schemes that you do, the designs or the builds. But um, we're big supporters of Pro Landscaper generally in the Pro Pro Landscaper Business Awards. I think it's a really good good angle. Yeah. Well, to let you into a little secret, I'm actually a judge on those Pro Landscaper I awards, and I've awarded you uh, very very high scores. And, and and I know you won one uh, or a couple. So um, yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm not the only judge who judges for those, so it's not just down to me. Um, but very good, lovely to have you on the show, and um, really looking forward to hearing all about your story. Yeah, so, thanks um, for inviting me. yeah, no, it's an absolute pleasure. I've been trying to get you for a while, as you know, and, yes. um, and I'm pleased. You know, I'm pleased <laughs> you accepted the invitation. There's some, you know, you're amongst many, many brilliant names uh, in the industry, as you know. Um, so, you. Um, yeah, you'll just be an, another addition to that long list of great people in the industry. Um, okay, so let's start. How long have you personally been in the industry then? Well, I um, I, I was quite horrified to work out that uh, it's it's really 37 years, um, 30, 31 years with my own business, but um, I started really straight from school. Right. So um, when I was, um, I had a, even a, a Saturday job, um, working for so Saturdays and holidays school holidays working for a friend who had a forestry business so so probably when I was about 16 I started working in the industry yeah so it's a real passion just a natural sort of way for you to go there by the sounds of it I think I think so it was it was never an intended career really mm. I, I I sort of drifted into it I wanted to do uh, other things and, and and even when I would had started working for my friend's forestry business in the holidays uh, I didn't really have any I didn't really quite know what I wanted to do um mm. I know that when I when I was growing up um I grew up in the in the Cotswolds very beautiful part of the world and my, my grandparents had a lovely acre garden uh, in the Slad Valley if anybody knows the Slad Valley is where Cider Laurie Lee um wrote lived and wrote Cider with Rosie Right. And they um, they had a beautiful garden, and we, my brother and I, would spend a lot of time there. But um, we didn't really. We we would do things. We would play in the garden. We would shoot air rifles. Um, <laughs> help help my grand and granddad a bit. And and I just I loved the space, but never thought I would go into the industry. Mm. Um, and then I I dropped out of. Uh, my A levels after a year, and for want of anything better to do, whilst I was really working out what I was going to do, I went and worked full time for my friend's forestry business, and I started to sort of drift towards doing that. And I got, um, I was about to go and start a forestry management course um, up in the Lake District, and then I I met a chap who who came to work for um, the forestry company for a couple of days in his summer holidays. And he was at Merris Wood and he was telling me all about this sort of landscape design construction course he was doing at Merris Wood. And to be honest, that just sounded much more exciting than going off to do this forestry course. So I quickly found out about that and, um, quite soon got myself on that course and changed, um, stopped working for the forestry company, went and worked for a landscape company for six months. 
before going on to the course and um yeah that's how I sort of started out or how I ended up um just studying landscape yeah it's funny isn't it it's like sliding doors one kind of moment like yeah, that yeah defines you know that that actually take at that point defines the rest of your life and uh, and here we yeah, are it was really really significant really yeah. significant moment actually brilliant actually, in a strange way personally as well because through my college people I met there I, I met my wife and so on as well so so yeah. if it wasn't for that moment yeah. my yeah but I guess that's the same for everybody it is isn't it at every point in your life every juncture in your life there's something that happens or you, you know decision you make or someone you meet and you know, it moulds the rest of your life, the the, uh, the shape of your life. So, okay, yes. so you've been, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you you admitting that it's thirty seven years <laughs> makes you feel yeah. that's been a little yeah. bit old, doesn't it? But um, hey ho, um, I think it's a great great achievement and still going strong, obviously. Um, so, where did it start then for you uh, in in the business? You know, what 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 made you go into business for yourself then, and where did it start? What 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 year did you start your actual business? Well, when I I graduated from um, college, I worked for a while for a company called um, that are now Capital Garden Landscapes. I don't think they have their landscape division anymore, but um, I got a I, I, I got a job um, as a designer uh, manager for a landscape company at the the very tender age of twenty one. So mm-hmm. I'd, I'd worked a bit in the industry. Had my pre industrial experience year and I'd spent a year working in America as part of the course and got some experience but but I really I went right in at the deep end um designing and building gardens in North London managing the build of them uh, and I was probably I felt really out of my depth mm. um with it but but I stuck with it and it and you know I managed to make a decent go of that and I enjoyed I enjoyed most of it but um after a couple of years, the company I was working for was buying out some other landscape companies mm-hmm. and they amalgamated several companies. And um, it just so happened when, when that happened, I, I stopped enjoying it so much. I had, there was a different management structure. Mm-hmm. I had a different line manager. I, I just w- wasn't really enjoying it. Um, and so at then 23, I just decided that the right thing to do was to go and set my own business up. Wow, big step, um, big leap of faith. Yeah, it's a huge leap of faith, and uh, but people say to me, "Oh, well, that was really brave." When I look back now, I, I don't think I think it's much braver to do it when you're 33 with a family and a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, uh, if you do it at 23, you can do it. You've got to, you know, find money for rent. And a bit of beer money, yeah. but but actually you you you've got much more sort of flexibility in life mm. than when you're when you're older. So mm. when I look back, it was both a really good thing to do, but also but also um, uh, uh, quite probably a naive thing to do because I didn't have that much experience. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's it's good at that age. You sort of just you don't have so much fear, and like you say, you don't have the responsibility, do you? So if you're going to do it any time. It makes sense, but still a bold move. You know, 23, not many people start their own business at 23, do they? So um, you're obviously um, well ahead of your um, your mates at the time, no doubt, who probably were in jobs. But, um, okay, so what did the business look like then when you started? I mean, people, well, I, vans, tools, I mean, what? what, what yeah, well, it was, it was literally two, two of us set it up. So I had a business partner, which I, and I had that business partner until about uh, seven years ago when I bought them out. Okay. Um, so we set it, we set it up, two of us, uh, uh, and literally we, we bought a van. Um, we, we basically ran it um, from a flat, um right. we we rented a garage to store things in um so we didn't have we didn't really have much space uh but fortunately it's the sort of business you can set it up uh relatively inexpensively for us so so we literally um from finishing work as a designer manager i even had a little company car at the time yeah. um we 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 had a van and we were uh, i went out Basically, I think we had handed our notice in very late in the year and it got around to Christmas time. And I spent the time between Christmas and New Year walking around the Hampstead Garden suburb and those areas, dropping leaflets through people's yeah. doors. Yeah. Uh, and we got we got a bit of business. We got a few gardening jobs from that. We got a few really small landscape 
projects and um so that's 31 years ago and i still have a few of those clients now from really? um from all that time ago wow. it, was, it was quite effective yeah i think customer lifetime value for those customers i mean god unbelievable 31 years as a client that's a, that says a lot, doesn't it? It says it all. Um, obviously, do a good job. <laughs> um, brilliant. So um, it's like a classic kind of Google um, kind of stories. You, you start in your garage or your your, your, yeah. your flat or yeah. your front room or your bedroom and and, and yeah. the, the garage. No Google, of course, or, or mobile <laughs> phones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. None of that. So um, excellent. Okay, then. So um, what does it look like now? So compared to what it was. Fast forward 31 years. Yeah, well, well, I, I think, and I say to people that I, I feel I'm quite pedestrian as a business person. I, I'm, not, I'm not actually knocking that, um, but we, we're now, we employ 20 people. Um, we have a network of specialist contractors and specialist professionals that we we work with. So we we have a an office team of, of uh, five people, plus I have some um, freelance designers I work a lot with um design specialists planting specialists and so on and um we also have a lot of a really good network of specialist metal workers lighting people and and so on so it's uh um it's very much about the people we employ but it's um, th th there's also a, a much sort of bigger picture of um people we work with so so that we can you know put put a really good package together for our our clients and we we've really fortunate when i look back at those days we did tiny projects we would have a few days a week gardening and um i would hope to get a little landscape project to fill in a few days a week mm. and, and, and now you know we work on some fantastic projects and some quite large um projects which is is really satisfying to do but they might be six month projects for instance yeah yeah, um, yeah. We have a team. A far cry from the early days when you're just doing a few bits of uh, gardening and the odd small project to yep, keep, the, yep. keep the bills paid. But, but it's a good way to, it's a great way to, to learn. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, yeah, it's all yeah. building blocks, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Over time. I mean, who would have thought maybe in, in 31 years ago when you started your business that you'll be where you are now, you know, building the kind of gardens that, that you do and winning national awards, you know, at the same time. It's, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Really rewarding. Um. So, um, Okay, what, what would you say, if we go into the business side of things now then, what would you say the most important elements are to running a successful business? Over the last 31 years, obviously you've probably seen lots of ups and downs and learnt lots. Yeah. What would you say the most important things are? I think, um, I think the most important, important things, there's probably three three or four things, is the absolute thing is if you, if you want to build a business, you want to build a team, uh, want to build a team you, you've, you've, you've got to... Uh, be pretty good with 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 people and you've you've really got to take care to look after people get their respect build the team and i think that that applies to people that you work with people that work for you yeah. uh, suppliers clients it's all it's all about building um trust and um respect um, absolutely, it's it, it's about building your team and looking after your looking after your people. Um, so I think that's a really key thing. And then I think it's about um, uh, what I qualify this all with is, as I said earlier, I've I only worked for a, a business as a manager for two years. So the rest of it, I I've made it up as I go along, largely. Yeah. Um, so this is just my opinion. It may it may be different for for different people, but for me, I think it's very much about just sort of deciding what you want to do and what your core business is, and then, and then really working hard at that thing. Other people might think it's about spotting different opportunities and going mm -hmm. off in different directions, mm -hmm. but, but for me, it, it was very much about deciding what I wanted to do, and then trying to make sure that when what you're doing is working towards that that goal and does it does it fit with that you know agenda of what you of what, what you want to achieve and trying not to get drawn yeah and with with other bits um i also think as a um having the experience of doing it i think one of the really important things is actually trying to get some thinking time for you as a an owner manager um and it's very very easy to get drawn 
into the business running you and and I've you know I can think of several times where that where I've sort of slipped into that mode over the years and I've had to have a little bit of a reset to um try and get things back where I wanted them to to be going um just scribbling down loads of notes here whilst you uh whilst you're talking about your words of wisdom um there's some really really good points in there i'm just just to, to jump in there at that point um you say people the most important thing and, and that's so common with so many other guests but usually the emphasis has been about recruiting and, and about your people but i don't think it's you're, what you're saying it's not just about the people that work for you it's about um having respect and trust for your for your people that do work for you but also the clients the the people that work yeah, with you yeah. so you're trusted um uh contractors that you bring in for specialist stuff so it's all about you know trusting them and respecting those as well yes yeah. um which which i think is a really good take on the people element because it's not just all about recruiting the great people which you know everyone wants to um and focusing on the main event not not getting distracted by the sideshows you talk about you know let's focus on what we're really good at i think you're right yeah. I think a lot of people do try and get distracted or they think oh the next shiny object they go there they go there but focusing on what you your core business is you don't necessarily need to diversify you know if you if you have like a real clear you know picture of what that is yeah yeah in your head, that's really really important yes yes and i can i think of a, a time probably um you know, 30, 30 years in business, I've been through a few recessions and, um, you know, ups and downs, as as, as you say. Um, and I can remember, for instance, back in with the sort of financial crash back in sort of 2008 that lasted for a, a few years mm. before then. Business was sort of, business was actually really good, but I was getting drawn much more down a contract route. And I'd, I'd always had a love for design. I wanted to do... Um, uh you know fo focus on that but be because partly where the business was i were we were in a lot of demand with designers to build their gardens and so on i was sort of getting quite drawn into that and then 2008 for a few years it did sort of quieten down a bit and i did then really sort of reset and think i um you know what i was interested in what i really wanted to do was much more i wanted it to be a more design-led business yeah. And so I, I sort of made a real conscious effort to sort of refocus on on that. Um, uh, and it was only then, actually, that I joined and became a registered member of the Society of Garden Designers. I'd never found time to do it before, um, but that was quite a sort of key thing. But it was about deciding to make a bit of time for me and give me some thinking time and yeah. decide what I wanted to do and then and sort of go forward in a way that I wanted to do. So when I look back on what was a recession... Um, actually, that was a really positive yeah. turning point for the business. Um, and we really, from that point, we much more built our reputation as a design-led business rather than a, a business that was a contractor for other people. Yeah, yeah that, that's such an important point. You mentioned, you know, three great points there. People focusing on your core business. But then the, the third thing you, you, you mentioned and alluded to again there is the thinking time part. Now, um, you can't underestimate the time for, for peace and quiet and actual clear like clarity, you know, of, of thought. Um, have you ever heard of a book um, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah, I have. I have. I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. So there's a there's a brilliant book. Robert Kiyosaki is the author of that book. And and the chap, the rich dad, who they refer to in that book, it's called The Rich Dad. There's a rich dad and there's a poor dad. For those of you who haven't listened to that book, really, really good for building your wealth. But The Rich Dad is a chap called Keith Cunningham. And, and he's you know very very you know very rich obviously as you'd expect <laughs> um, but also very successful and runs um a, a business in, in in the us um one of his audio books his last audio book i think it's called the road less stupid um it's all about thinking time so he talks about thinking time and he even sets up a, a chair in his office that has nothing else apart from a desk and a pad and, and, a, and a chair and he sits back asks himself a question right whatever he wants to achieve closes his eyes and just blocks out all the noise and actually gives himself thinking time every single day. And it says the most valuable part of his whole day. And I don't think, I think business owners are so used to just running around, you know, chasing their tails, not having time to think. But if you have time to think, you know, you can be a lot, a lot, a lot less um, organized and maybe less busy full territory and actually thinking like, what do I really want? How, yeah. do I, how yeah. should I do stuff? 
So that's really important. I'm really, really quite impressive that you um, that you mentioned that in terms of you know one of the most important things that you've found in your business to have that time to actually think. Yes, yeah. Really. I, I also found um, the obviously COVID, uh, the sort of COVID COVID years, as I tend to sort of think yeah. think of it. Um, there was uh, you know, obviously that that caused a lot of people a, a lot of hardship and so on but but I also found that for personally for me you know we're in our industry I think we were hugely fortunate yeah. for lots of ways yeah. um uh it, it, you know during during covid but again it it gave me a bit of a chance <clears throat> I wasn't feeling the need to rush around so much you know it was acceptable to um yeah. spend more time at home and, and so on and I also you know I actually found that a, a good time um from a business point of view and being able to sort of think about what I want to do. Yeah. Slow um, down a bit. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. So, so at, at the start there, um, when I was asking you about the important elements, I think you mentioned there were four important elements, the people, the focus and the, the thinking. Was there, the, was there a fourth? I, um, I think <laughs> I, said, I said three or four, didn't I? Yeah. I, th I think I touched on, I suppose it's, it's looking after your, your employees, um, clients, um, I, you know, I think there is lots and lots of elements of a business. Um, I suppose that the fourth one would be you do have to you have to be a good financial manager. You, you do have to be you do have to be commercially aware. Um, I don't feel I'm um, I, I'm sort of driven by uh, by the financial side of things. Really, um, I you know I, I want to be comfortable. I want to do well. But what I find if, if I'm looking after the other things. The, the financial side tends to look after itself yeah. um, reasonably well, um, but you can't take your eye off it. It's really important because um, if, if you're looking after the financial side, even if you're looking after it in the background and it's not at the front of your mind all the time, mm. um, if you don't look after it, then running a business becomes a, a horrible thing. Yeah, yeah, stress. To, um, so I think it, it is vitally important you are you are commercially aware you're you're reasonably commercially astute and you keep you keep that side of things well managed. Absolutely. Well, look, if you don't, you can get some um, nasty surprises, and then the potentially yeah. one day might not be a business. So, really, really important that you do know your numbers and understand it. You haven't got to necessarily be an, an accountant, an expert, but you need to know what the the key numbers, like those those KPIs. You know, what are the, the numbers yes. you need to know? You know, the break even numbers, yeah. the gross margin numbers. You know, yeah. all those kind yeah. of things. And look, look, look at you know, cash flow is important. Um, but if your cash flow is okay. Yeah. It is knowing it, you know, what you've really got to look after is your profit and loss and whether whether that's um you know and that's in good order and for the turnover you're doing, are you getting a reasonable return on it? And are you in a part of the market that allows you to do that? So so for us, we're you know, fortunately what we love to do is is high end uh design and build. We do we like building gardens for other designers as well. Yeah. Um we want to work in that part of of, of the market that is a little bit less it's a bit more quality driven and a little less commodity um yeah. driven um and i think that that sort of helps so trying to make sure you're in you know, you're in the right part of the market is really important oh absolutely especially going into recessions you know the, the, you want to be at the top end yeah. because not not saying they're not affected by the recession but they're they're not as affected as the people in the lower to mid end of the market um and uh, that's where you want to be. That's where you tend to win a lot of the uh, the national awards, isn't it, for those lovely big projects? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great for the teams. It's it's, it's sort of self fulfilling, really. Yeah, uh, yeah, and... a lot of reward, isn't there? A lot of um, sort of yeah. job satisfaction and achievement. Um, good. So look, there, there there are a lot of good things about um, running a business and and to be aware of. Um, in terms of um, maybe mistakes um, or potential failures, um, what what kind of maybe major setbacks have you had or, or or mistakes have you made or challenges that you've overcome have you can you look back in your over your 31 years to think blimey you know i wouldn't have done it like that if i'd known then what i know now i think i think my my sort of business progression has been a little bit like a stock market graph where it's got better and better but but there's definitely been ups and downs along yeah. the way yeah for various things i think if i had my time again it's a tricky one because I, I think going into business really young was worked out well for me um, but if I had my time again, I would probably work for spend another couple of years working and try and work for at least another company or 
or two because um I you know I went into it without a lot of management experience so I didn't really know how to run a business and as I yeah. said so I needed to sort of make it up as I went along so I'd probably do that a bit differently I think I would um uh get involved I, I did sort of immerse myself in the industry a lot so I've, I've gone to always lots of sort of trade shows I've you know been to Chelsea for our show for mm. probably every year for the last 30 odd, yeah. odd odd years and I've been quite involved but probably right back in the early day I would have probably even tried to do a bit more of more of that um to find out how other people how other people did did things so I think I probably yeah. banged my head against the wall quite quite a bit when I was um you know trying to grow the business um I think the, the sort of real challenges I've had, um, it probably comes back to sort of team building and uh, team building and, and key people. I think I've been really fortunate over over 30 years. We've had sort of fantastic, wonderful clients by and large, you know, like everybody. I've probably had the odd project that has been really challenging. Mm. Um, we, it, I get touch wood in 30 years we've hardly had any we've never had any significant bad debts yeah touch wood. Um, we've had a few you know we've had a few minorly painful ones i think with the what i think i've probably found most difficult is every time i've tried to move the business to the next level hmm. um, i have always felt i've had to sort of bang my head against the wall or to try and break through and working out how to do it i can remember it sort of early days uh our, trying to get the first employee in the business and we mm. we interviewed somebody we they they had agreed a start date it was a couple of months down the line and yeah. anyway we held held out hope for this employee they sort of started it uh, but then they didn't work out unless within a week uh, it didn't work out and, and and I think we had a couple of goes trying to get our first employee we had sort of a couple of attempts at it and we couldn't um we didn't get anybody to stick and then we found somebody who was great and that all became a bit easier yeah. and then we could we started to employ a few more people mm. um, and so when we had a good person or two that element of it became became a bit easier um but it but initially it was really hard and, and possibly at that point it was almost the only time i ever thought about oh, i'm not going to do this i can't yeah. Um, yeah. you know i won't succeed at it but i did stick with it and then I think when um again when I wanted to stop working on site at all myself mm. um, and and just concentrate on design and management that was really difficult I I got the the financial model completely changes yeah. and I didn't really sort of realize that for a, a year or, or so because when you're suddenly not working for your own wages and I think mm. if there are sort of young people at this stage trying to get them to the next level that's quite a difficult bit because you've got to have people you really trust doing the work um, but then you've got to somehow make enough money that there's enough profit in the projects so that that pays you as a as a manager and if you're designing as well of course you hopefully get an income from that so so I, you know, I had that when I was trying to get teams on site. That was really challenging, but I did always, you know, I always stuck with it um, and tried slightly different angles to make the same thing work. Yeah. And and I think the same when I started to um, have managers and office people, it was exactly the same same barrier. Really, I had a few. I, I promoted uh, my first manager. I promoted them as a from team level to to a manager uh, and at the time I didn't realize it was a completely different skill set mm. um, and I couldn't make that work and that uh, and that didn't work so I sort of lost a manager and a and a team leader yeah, yeah. Um, because it didn't it didn't work out and it was too stressful for them because they didn't have the skills and so on so at every point I, I felt like I had to I was sort of re having to sort of learn it for myself or reinvent the wheel a bit yeah. And then I sort of, you know, realised, okay, this is how I, I need to go about it a bit differently uh, and became a, a bit more successful about building an office team. Um, it's still absolutely got its challenges and, and um, you know, having, um, a, a, you know, the right site people is, is still a challenge, but yeah. somehow it can be easier to employ 20 people than it is to employ one or two people. Yeah. Not, not least because you've always got maybe some people coming in and some people coming going out yeah 
Um, whereas if you've got one or two, you're suddenly losing all, all or half your workforce if, if, if something goes goes wrong. Um, I think I've possibly lost a few key people over the years. Uh, in hindsight, I would have loved to have kept in the business. Most of the time, they, they've gone on to do. They've a lot of the time. I'm, I'm sure other people in my position um, have the same experience. But people will want to go and set their own business up. Yeah. And it's really hard to stand in somebody's way if they want to prepare, if they want to do what I, I wanted yeah. to do. Um, and there are a few relatively successful businesses around me that are, are run by people that used to work for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm quite proud of that. Um, yeah. And I've had other people that have gone off to do it and they, they've come back and worked for me as well. Yeah, it's funny. Look, it's massive kind of learning curve, isn't it? I mean, you don't wake up one day and and knowing how to recruit great people how to manage great people you know uh, and, and there's that element of doubt isn't there that um you know if you don't understand how to do something you're out you're out of your comfort zone you start doubting yourself you know, oh, am i am i set up for this you know and i think it's yeah. just because you don't have the knowledge it's like anything in life when you don't know how to do something it's really difficult and confusing yeah. you out your depth. Yeah. as soon as you learn how to do it either from others like you said earlier you know learn from others in the industry you know go and see people that have done it all right and, yeah. and, and so successfully but these days we're in i think people are in a much much better position because we didn't have the internet in 1991 we didn't no. couldn't go onto google couldn't go onto youtube you had to go to the library probably and go and find yeah. a book yeah <laughs> i think one of, one of the things i found most beneficial when i was um sort of early days of the business was um I was I wanted to join Bali, so there's a strong link with um, Bali, my college, most would. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, so I was as soon as I was about in industry, I was really tuned into being part of getting involved with, with Bali. So as soon as I could, I, I the business became a Bali member. I went along to a lot of the North Thames meetings, and I met um, you know, a lot of people there. It, it was great. So I, I would. Um, Mark Gregory was chair of North Thames um, yeah. when I joined up, and he, he's a you know, few years older than me. But I could, you know, I, I met quite a few people who were very sort of generous with their advice and time, and I'm always sort of you know, grateful for mm. Mark. Um, um, but the likes of Mark, John O'Connor, you know, the late great John O'Connor, who who would give me sort of pearls of wisdom, and I would I would go along and, and chat about some problem I was having. New chat to other people, and you'd either realise that. Oh, they they might have got a uh, better way of doing it. And generally, they're always free with their their advice. Yeah. Um. Or, or they'd say, "Oh, we've got exactly the same problems, and we're banging our heads against the wall as well." Uh, yeah. But you sort of realise you're you're not. Uh, you're not yeah. Alone. yeah. Um, but the industry is so abundant, isn't it? Every one of our, or a lot of the people I've had on this podcast have all said, you know, ask people. You've got support. You've got SGD. You've got the bar. Yeah, you've got APL. Yeah. You've got all these other um, organisations that you can tap into, haven't you? you know, yes. Pro landscape yeah. stuff as well. Um, it's it's all out there, and everyone's open to help helping others because everyone's been in that situation, and 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 they knows how hard that is sometimes, and yeah. how lonely that can be on your own. I think it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a great industry for that. I th I think what you've also just about being being lonely i think it's a really important point because it is if you're a business owner and you're not sure where to go or what to do yeah. um i i would just say look go you know depending on what sort of sector you're in you know get involved with the sgd get involved um with with barley go and meet people who are facing the same uh yeah. difficulty because it, it is a sort of club where where it is very supportive um and probably the only thing I'd add to that as well, I think, is if you're you're sort of learning to manage and you want to set up a bit, you you want to set up a business. Is I think you can learn a lot from other people, but I think you also need to sort of learn to do it your own way. A yeah. bit as well. I know. Your own style of it. Yeah. Me, I I looked at people like John O'Connor and Mark Gregory who had who had great businesses at the time, and and I sort of felt a little bit. Oh, I've got you know if I'm going to be set, I've got to be like them, and they're quite extrovert characters um personally i'm much more sort of introverted and i realized i had to find a way of doing it myself Your style, um, yeah. i think fortunately your management styles have changed a lot over the years the, the days of the likes of, sort of the, the alex ferguson type style <laughs> of management, it's sort yeah, of gone can't get away from that, um, away from that anymore, and, <laughs> yeah and and for me I, i'm feel much more comfortable um trying to sort of talk to people individually and and, yeah. and sort of encourage and motivate motivate them but not in a sort of particularly extrovert way i think it is important people want to 
develop a business to, to realize that they've got to sort of develop their own style and do it in a way that they're comfortable with because you can't be out of your comfort zone all the time no 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 you can't pretend to be someone you're not as well no. you play everyone's got their strengths and their way of doing things and um everyone's different aren't they so um, yeah. what, have you, what have you found the most um, rewarding parts of, of running your own business and, and being in business for yourself i think um it's the thing i probably find the most rewarding thing is when i've got people who've come through the business and they they they're doing well they're building quality projects where they're sort of gardening or, or building landscapes or, or, or designing but when somebody's really developed and they become what I sort of call a self-directed person um, they uh, I think that's probably one of the most rewarding things when when the the team around you is doing really well and they're doing stuff where your sort of intervention is a bit less I think yeah. that's probably the most satisfying thing I mean I I, I love when the business you know, gets a, gets a good accolade. You know, it, it wins an award or or something. That, that that's great. It's also it, it is so quite a fleeting thing, mm. um, and it it's not as um, it's not as long lasting a, a, as if you know, if you have a project that hasn't gone well, for instance. Mm. You know that that can be painful for a lot for a long a long long time. But I think the really the really rewarding thing is is just when the the business is working really well and we are building nice projects it's in harmony the t the teams yeah. the team teams are happy we've got happy clients happy teams and if you can just sort of bottle that and keep it going that <laughs> yeah. that probably is the most rewarding thing yeah. uh, and uh, and occasionally um so you know, winning awards are, are, are great and they're really important for the business but occasionally i'll get something out of the blue from a client and it might be I got something a little while ago from a, a, a client who I hadn't really been in touch with or seen for a couple of years, and I got a one a sort of one line of message from them, and it, and it was uh, my garden makes me happy every day, oh, wow. and, that, and, and that was it, and that was you know that little moments yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason, isn't it? It's like that's that's yeah. why we do what yeah. we do. Yeah, it's our purpose. Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, the moments of joy like that are, are great because you will spend a lot of time running a business, grappling with gnarly problems and gnarly, yeah. and gnarly issues, and trying to get things back on track how, how you want them to. But um, but yeah, so and, and enjoy those moments. So when yeah, yeah, yeah. Off. it's nice that people actually feel the need to to actually tell you that you know, to give you that feedback because they might think that all your clients must think that I'm sure they do all the time every summer, but for them to actually make the effort to go, you know what. I'm loving my garden every day. That's that's what you're in it for, isn't it? That's that's the bit yeah. that gets you going. That's the bit yeah, that you know, is the yeah. passion, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the joy, the joy of industry that we do make people happy, and we do yeah, uh, yeah. We... creating happy memories in their gardens for their with their yeah. families and chilling out time and yeah, absolutely you know, entertaining friends. That's what that's what um you know the a garden gives you, isn't it? Yeah. So when that when that you get evidence of that, that's probably yeah. the most sat yeah. satisfying part. You know you're doing the right thing, then, don't you? Um, yep. I love your 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 um, description there. You're a self-directed person. I've not heard that one before. I think that's yeah. Well, self-directed. It's what we're trying to create: self-directed teams. Yeah, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to so, steal that one if that's all right. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you you can have it. But it's when you've got a team that um, uh, they they sort of know how they they know when to report. They they sort of know when not to. Um, and I, I look to get my teams to sort of take up the, the sort of highest level of management they possibly can themselves. Yeah. And I, you know, I really encourage that. Uh, and um, uh, because that takes the strain off me, it gives them more satisfaction, I think. They know they've got the trust. They've yeah, got my more trust. autonomy. Yeah, more responsibility. Yeah, yeah and yeah. trust, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. and they're responsible for the decisions and, and hopefully most of the time they make they make good ones. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is, I mean, some people, if, if you're a bit, a bit of a control freak, then people are scared to make any kind of decisions. But if you give them, you know, the opportunity to support a bit of risk taking, but as long as they're well thought out and not silly risks, but calculated yeah. decisions, then yeah, absolutely need to encourage that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's always the emphasis is always on you, the onus is on you to come up with all the ideas yeah. and yeah. people are scared to make any any decisions for themselves. Um, so right, I think I've got another one or two questions for you, James. I'm, I'm in, uh, in the interest of time. I know that you're a busy man, um, so I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, if you had any advice for anyone who's listening to this at the moment and they're struggling in their business or they've got to a point in their business where 
they're stuck and they can't make that next step up to the next level um they don't know what steps to take what kind of advice would you give them um so again for me i can only really give it in sort of how i've how i've really done things i i a couple of things um you know i i i've i've always stuck with him so i think being tenacious is actually really important um i think you've got to be careful if you're you know if you're digging a hole yeah. and you're doing things wrong you don't want to keep digging that hole but if you're if you are you know if you you if you have got your eyes sort of you know you're focused on the end game and you know what know what you want i think you do you've a you've really got to stick with it um, I am a huge believer in getting sort of time out to do things um, around the industry, um, do other things in life as well, of course. But but I, I think going back to making sure you're in, involved in trade things, if, you know, if you're a designer, get yourself involved. Yeah. Immerse yourself with the SGD. Yeah. Um, go to Bali meetings, get yourself along to chelsea flower show and other shows um talk to pe you know talk to lots of people in the industry who yes, are in, i've always found them always very generous with their their advice yeah um and i think you've 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 got to just sort of keep plugging away and don't try not to get too disheartened because you've tried something two or three times and it and it hasn't worked um you know and i, I think yeah if you've got your eye if you have got your eye on your goal and you think you know what the steps are, you've got to keep moving to those steps. But, but of course, don't you know if you're in financial trouble or something, don't don't keep you know digging yeah. a hole. No, um, then, then you need, probably need a different type of advice. I think that's a really really good point. I've ne not had that one before about being tenacious. And I think to have tenacity is is great, and and to have that belief and faith that you know you'd go in the right yeah. direction. Obviously, like you say, not when you're going in the wrong direction or digging the hole. We don't want to keep digging it that much longer or deeper. Um, but talking to others, I think, really helps that, doesn't it? Sort of getting out there, speaking to other people, getting involved with all the brilliant um, organisations, the yeah. governing bodies that there are yeah. out there. Sometimes uh, you need a different angle. Yeah, um, yeah, think yeah. About something in a different way. Yeah, because sometimes it can it can sort of um, test your judgment maybe you think you know I'm thinking this way and it's not working but sometimes getting out there and talking to people either confirms it yeah. or <laughs> rightly or wrongly you know so um i think that's a, a brilliant advice and and you've got to be resilient haven't you and, and and you've got to persevere and you've got to have that faith and belief that actually yeah. you've got to be quite tough in business haven't you? I, I think re resilience is another key thing actually i, I think um to going back to what I was saying about different characters, different styles, you know, extroverts, introverts, and so yeah. on. I think you can do whatever your personality type, I think you can you can do it and there's a place for you. You just need to go about it a little bit differently. Yeah. But the one thing I think most people have in common that do you know build a business over quite a few years it, it is resilience. So you do you do need you do need a reason about resilience because you are going to get you are going to get knocks. You are you know absolutely business get, isn't it that's business you're gonna, yeah you'll probably get a few small knocks or you know possibly even every day and you but you've got to be able to work through them and you 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 can't um you know let them sway you from your path too yeah. much yeah you've got to um, become bulletproof when you really but as long as yeah. you've got you know that vision of what you're trying to achieve and keeping focused on that and um and having belief in that You've got to be able to uh, roll with the punches to some degree, and you've got to be able to get up when 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 things are not going your well, you know, your way, and yeah. keep, keep yeah. getting up. And um, who is it? That said, I think was it is Rocky Balboa. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to keep getting hit. You know, you're going to get hit no matter what life chucks at you. You've got to keep getting up and yeah. get up and yeah. get hit. You're going to get hit because you know life will do that to you. And you know, it's survival of the, of the fittest and the strongest really in business. You know, otherwise, um, you know, it can be quite a tough tough gig quite a lonely thing quite a lonely place yes i think we're done i think we're done james um thanks so much for your time um thank you you know we, we have been talking for quite a while now so i don't want to uh, keep you any longer but there's been some brilliant insights there some really really useful takes on uh, on your experience of being in business for all those years so lots of wisdom um if if someone would like to get in touch with you either to pick your brains or to ask you a question or for you to be that person where they can reach out and support you or yeah. Or to, to 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 if they're interested in in taking on your services as, of garden design and build, yeah. what would be the best way for them to contact you personally? 
Um, the be best way is via our website, which is um, www.thegardenco.co.uk, or my personal email address is james at thegardenco.co.uk. Perfect. Uh, or, or, uh, or if people are looking for a, um, a career in landscape or design, we're, we're always looking for um, good people. And at the moment, we are we are looking at um, our, my next barrier is our succession planning. Right. So, um, um, you know, we're also looking at um, uh, yeah, bringing on a senior manager as well. Right. Well, look, the best companies attract the best people. And you've just won one of the major awards in the industry. So um, if uh, if there's ever, ever ever a good time to join the, gun, uh, the garden company, then it's definitely got to be you. It's got to be now, hasn't it? So um, let's hope that you can attract the best um, because you're doing great things in the industry. Thanks, James. Really Thank appreciate you. Thank all you your time. Much, um, Thank thanks you. for accepting this invitation. I've been hounding you for a while. You've done it and we've achieved it. So uh, thanks Thank you. for your time. It's been a pleasure, Nick. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Cheers, James. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Grow Landscapers podcast. To get in touch and see how we can help you with your business by emailing nick at nickruddle.com.